Welcome back, everyone, to exercise 2.4. This is another exercise based around types of definitions. Um, probably the most difficult section of the chapter, um, but you can do it. Up above here, you will see the types of definitions that we're going to be categorizing the numbers down here into. Demonstrative, enumerative, subclass, synonymous, etymological, operational, and genus indifference. I'm just going to be working these problems and explaining a little bit about them. If you need um, more information about the types, make sure that you read the section and feel free to reach out to me directly um, if you need some more explanation. All right, number one. Plant means something such as a tree, a flower, a vine, or a cactus. And we jump right in. Probably the most difficult differentiation here is between definitions by subclass and enumerative definitions. Because here it kind of looks like it's an enumerative definition, like you're listing specific things um, as a representative of the definition of the larger. Uh, item or the term to be defined. But this is actually a definition by subclass. And that's because a tree is a class of things. There are all different types of trees that fall underneath it. A flower, the same, many types of flowers, a vine, and same with a cactus. So this is not an enumerative definition, um, but it's a definition by subclass. Number two, hammer means a tool used for pounding. This is a definition by genus indifference. So here, the genus is uh, a tool. The species is the hammer. The hammer is a type of tool. And the difference that differentiates what a hammer is, is that it's used for pounding. So this is by genus indifference. Number three, a triangle is equilateral if and only if a compass, when placed sequentially on two vertices and properly adjusted, strikes through the other two vertices. So if you have a triangle and you place your compass here, then when you go around, it should hit both the vertices, uh, the other two vertices. And that is how you define uh, equilateral triangle. Uh, this is an operational definition. So going in here, if you'll just hold for one second. An operational definition is or assigns a meaning to a word by specifying certain experimental procedures that determine whether or not the word applies to a certain thing. So in this case, the experimental procedure is to put your compass like the sharp point on one vertice, adjust it so that the pencil goes through another or another vertex, sorry, it should be vertex. And then when you bring it around with the same radius, it should hit the other one. So it's operational. You're using uh, an, a little experimental method. All right, number four, this relates back to number one. A state means something such as Ohio, Arkansas, Minnesota, and Tennessee. Now, this is an enumerative definition. Now, why it's not a definition by subclass is because Ohio is not technically a class. It is, we're not going to get into that right now, but it's a class of one thing, which is the state of Ohio. There aren't a bunch of different types of Ohio underneath. There aren't a bunch of different types of Arkansas. Um, um, and so this is an enumerative definition because you're listing off one, uh, a list of specific things that are representative of what a state is rather than classes of things that relate. Angel is a word that originates from the Greek word angelos, meaning, or which means messenger. You go back up to our table, they're also listed here. This is an etymological definition. And so, uh, and it's because we're tracing the, the meaning of the word back to 
some form of previous language. And so we're tracing the etymology of the term, in this case, from Greek. And so this is an etymological definition. Neophyte means beginner. Neophyte means beginner. Um, this is a synonymous definition. Philosopher means kook. Um, whenever you see usually kind of a single word or a few words that mean the exact same thing as the other term, then we're defining it synonymously. Oftentimes we do this just with complex terms. We use, uh, complex might not be the right term for that, but let's use that term anyway. We use more simplistic terms than most people would know to say like, yeah, a neophyte just means that it's a beginner. So you could use the term beginner, but if you wanted to try to impress your uh, teacher as you're writing your, um, your essay, you could use the term neophyte. But sometimes that can get students into trouble when they just pull out a thesaurus and then they start trying to make complex terms for every single word. You can kind of get a really strange type of language. House means that. House means that. That's my favorite definition. I don't know why, I, I like it. Um, Wittgenstein, a really famous philosopher, talked uh, about, about this type of, the construction of language. And in doing so, he takes you through this thought experiment. I can't remember if it's from, the, I think it's from the logical investigations, but I think it might also be in the brown and blue book. But um, anyway, house means that. So if you just point at something, the guy I hate who teach, <laughs> teaches my logic class is that guy. <laughs> Um, then it's a demonstrative definition. I think I like them too because um, if, have you ever hung out with babies or children? They're just fascinating. Um, and a lot of times when they're really young, you can see the, the foundations of our brain and they'll just be like, ah, I want that. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and then they kind of learn like, you know, door, milk, uh, potty, you know, all, all of those things. Um, but if, when they're just pointing at it, it's, and then you understand it, right? It's kind of interesting that we understand it. You know, they just point at something, you grab it, give it to them, and they're happy. Uh, it's amazing that we can communicate with each other that way. If we couldn't communicate with each other that way, imagine how frustrating it was. It's already frustrating for babies, right? Um, they're always frustrated. <sighs> I have a six-month-old. Wow. Talk about frustration. But if, if, if we didn't have demonstrative definitions... Um, they'd be even more frustrated because they'd point at the milk bottle and I'd be like, what, why, whatever do you mean? <laughs> oh, that would be horrible. I saw, um, yeah, I saw a guy, he was brushing his daughter's hair in an elevator, just your typical. And he just like went to his other, his son and was like, hold with like a brush, you know, and the guy, he just like grabbed it and held it. Um, very precise communication. I, I appreciated it. Um, okay, painting means something like Da Vinci's Mona Lisa, Van Gogh's Starry Night, Botticelli's Birth of Venus, or Rembrandt's Night Watch. You know, one other thing that's kind of fun to do, most of us probably know Mona Lisa and Starry Night, but as you're like engaging with stuff like this, try to be um, curious, you know, like look up Botticelli's Birth of Venus and enjoy it. Um, if you don't have wiki art, uh, it's an app, download it. Be careful, it takes up a lot of space when you open the images, make sure you're on Wi-Fi. But it's really fun to just scroll through, you can see pretty much all of the great art ever created. Um, it's way better than Instagram. Um, but Instagram can be fun too. But anyway, I digress. Paintings like are these things. So what is that? Are these subclasses? No, they're not subclasses, they're exact things. So this is an enumerative definition. Number nine, subclass. Dessert means something such as pie, cake, cookies, or ice cream sundaes. There are all different types of pies. When I do this, what I mean is like, think of all like the cherry pie, blueberry pie, apple pie, 
So there's pies, there's all types of cakes, there's all types of cookies. And so when we're talking about dessert in this way, we're defining it by subclasses, larger than just groups of one. Hot means for an electric iron um, that your wetted finger sizzles when placed momentarily in contact with it. This is an operational definition. So if I test this using my finger, uh, uh, then I know that the iron's hot. You could probably just hold your hand close to and feel the heat from it. Um, no, needed, no need to sizzle your wet fingers. That seems a little bit too dangerous. Number 11, universe originates from the Latin word universus, which means whole or entire, etymological, again, going back to previous language. Mountain means something such as Everest, Rainier, Whitney, or McKinley, enumerative, enumerative, because these are individual mountains. Now, if it said mountains are things like the Himalayas, uh, the Appala um, Appalachians, or the Sierras, that would be definition by subclass. But because we have individual mountains list listed here, then it's enumerative. 13, hurricane means a storm having constant winds of at least 74 miles per hour that originates at sea. This is a definition by genus indifference. So storm is the larger genus. Hurricane is a species of storm. And a hurricane, the, the thing that differentiates it is that it is a storm that has 74 miles per hour and it originates at sea. Which actually, I don't know off the top of my head what the difference between a hurricane and a cyclone is, but um, you know, we regularly hear about cyclones. Um, there seems to be some differentiation there. And if, again, if we're curious, we can look it up, and have a good time learning new things. Number 14, a substance is translucent if and only if when held up to a strong light, some of the light comes through. So what I'm doing, I'm doing this like little procedure, this little test, holding it up, it's translucent, operational. Insect means something such as a fly, an ant, a wasp, or a caterpillar. There are multiple types of flies, multiple types of ants, multiple types of wasps, so on and so forth. So this is a definition by subclass. All right, I'll let you continue um, to keep going. Um, actually, we only did one of these. 17, facade means face, synonym, synonymous definition. All right, so we'll stop there. Um, okay, so I hope that you found this video helpful, and uh, I would encourage you to continue to keep learning logic and using it.